Hello all. In this video, I'd like to share with you a couple of accessories I've had made to work with the Fell and Festal plunge and circular saws. I may make more to sell if there's any interest, but I'll discuss that at the end of the video. Mafel and Festal both supply decent quality parallel fences with two bars for fixing, much like on a router fence. In both cases, the fences are dual function. One way round, as here, they're flush with the base of the saws and add extra stability. Flip round, they sit below the base and run along the edge of a workpiece to guard the saw, like any other parallel fence. Used in the orientation for stability, flush with the base, they're extremely useful for balancing the saw, particularly on hefty saws like my KSP85 here, the newer K85, or Festool's TS75 and the like, and especially on a 45 or even 60 degrees of bevel on these bigger saws. Now the extra support or balance provided by the fence is all well and good, but it only works off the guide rail. On a guide rail, you have to either not use it, which means having to continually support the saw with both hands while it's set to 45, or space out the parallel fence to lend a hand. That's where these beauties come in. I've had these machined in solid aluminium. In the base are two brass grub screws to adjust the height in case you've gone for different rail grip options or to allow for slight inconsistencies in the saw and fence. And on one side, there are two small thumb screws to fix it to the parallel fence. It's possible if you did need to set the grub screws underneath, it'd be an adjust once effort for your setup. Other than that, fitting the things takes seconds. Just slip it on and tighten the thumb screws. Not a lot of pressure is needed on the thumb screws to lock it in place. A slight tighten and friction does the rest. As you can see, fitted to the saw on the rail, the spacer makes up the difference. And if I tilt the saw to 45, you can see more clearly the purpose. The extrusion on the Festool fence is a little different, although it works to the same principle as the Mafel. The same goes for the spacer I've made for it. It's the same, but a bit different. This version is for the TS saws, and I've not done one for the HK range yet. But on this TS spacer, you'll notice the base is a little thinner to match, I hope, Festool rails, and the overall width is less than the Mafel version. Same aluminium stock and fixings. I hope to send this to a Festool user soon to get their feedback, and maybe a video too. On both brands of fence, the spacer can be left fitted when using the fences the other way round as a parallel guide. The spacer won't get in the way. Before I get into using it to cut material, I should no doubt say that yes, I know, you can do this with scraps from the van, the site or the workshop. A bit of double sided Gorilla Tape and a 5mm packer say, or some tape and a 5mm rip stuck to the fence. I know because that's what I've done previously, and I've seen others do various other workarounds. But this is an attempt to move on from a blag into accurate quality accessory territory. So with that said, the length I've gone for is approximately the whole length of the 55 range of saws. When you start a cut, you want the spacer and the fence to actually catch the workpiece for support before the blade contacts the work. I did toy with doing a longer one for the 75-85 range of saws, but as it happens, there's enough length as is to catch before and after the blade on the bigger saws too. So it's inadvertently one size fits all, at least in the case of the Mafel, which I'm pretty happy about. In case you're wondering how close you can have the fence and spacer to the saw on a 45, well on this saw, it's about 45mm from the inside of the spacer to the rail and about 83mm to the back. As I can, I'm moving the fence out a little, giving a nice wide footprint, nice and stable. When you start, you have to take a little of the weight of the saw so it's flat, but as you can see, it's an easy one-handed job with the fence for support. You can probably see those marks on the MDF under the fence. That appeared to be residue from machining that came from the grub screw holes. Should have checked and cleaned before putting the grubs in, I suppose. Anyway, the cut was a breeze, one-handed, nice and stable, and giving a lovely clean cut. 
Both pieces stood together, no fixing. They look a pretty good 90 degrees. No cupping along the cut line either, which can often happen if you wobble trying to balance the saw on a 45. Of course, you don't need to have your workpiece overhanging enough to rest the fence on. You could just use a piece of scrap of the same material and cut the bevel right on the edge of your workpiece. Again, you'll notice one-handed, no wobble. And the two cut faces stood next to each other again, nice and square. It's even nice to use the fence and spacer on the other side of the saw. Give it a generous width and the extra weight of the spacer will stop it toppling too. The fence does lift a little though, so cutting this way round you'll need to use both hands, but I've got to say, it feels incredibly reassuring cutting this way. Even though it's two-handed, I almost prefer it to having the fence on the other side. I mean, what you're seeing in this video is the first time I've used these spacers. Just attach the spacer, set up the camera, and shoot. No practice runs, fiddling, or furtling. So in that sense, I couldn't be happy with how it's worked out, to be honest. The cut face is really even on all the cuts so far, too. No burns or little curves left by the blade from a wobble. So on to using it with the bigger saw. A saw I'd more typically use on large structural timbers, like this piece from a truss assembly. For doing bird's mouths, say. Now of course, you cut those through the height of the timber, as I have it stood here. Preferably to make things efficient, you'd probably cut a whole run at once, or at least as many as you can stack on your trestles. You may just follow a pencil line marked across the pieces, no rail. If you've done this, or seen it done, you've probably seen the saw get buried in the stall once or twice too. It happens, you're trying to follow the line, balance the saw, and often stretch to finish the cut. As I've only got this scrap piece, I'm just going to cut a bird's mouth through it flat but it should suffice to show it can turn a monster saw bevel cutting into a bit of a pussycat. Not exactly pushing the saw with this exercise, but you get the idea. It just means you're not having to fight the weight of the saw to make your cut. And for that, it works really well. For me, it's another little niggle sorted with a permanent solution, saving me from taping bits to the fence like I used to do. I toyed with the idea of having these 3D printed from plastic, but although I like 3D printing, and it'd be a lot cheaper, I found 3D prints inconsistent. I also wanted this accessory to be, as well as look and feel like, a quality little add-on. Not a bargain that lasts 5 minutes and after a few uses is causing more problems than it solves. And more landfill. These being solid aluminium, with nicely eased over edges to prevent marking and catching, hits that brief I think. So like I say, these have solved an issue for me, and I'm happy to leave it at that. But what do you guys think? Is this just a solution to a problem you weren't having? Or is it something you'd like for yourself? More's the point, would you be interested in buying one if I were to have a few more made and sell them? What they'd cost without knowing how many of you, if anyone, is interested is something I can't really say. These prototypes, or one-offs, whichever they turn out to be, weren't cheap. If there's interest enough to make an initial dozen or so, they'd certainly cost less than these prototypes. For me, even if a one-off, the cost has been worth it, and I'll likely keep it and a fence almost permanently attached to the saw. So let me know your thoughts, comment below if you'd be interested or not, and if enough of you are interested, I'll see if I can't get a small batch made. I'd like to thank the machinist Andy before I go too, a great turnaround time for a one man bespoke machining service, so if any of you have any ideas you'd like to get off paper and into reality, I'll leave a link for him in the description. Also, a big thanks to Tim Cook for donating the festival fence to me to work from, much appreciated mate. Thanks for watching.